What's up guys, Zal here, and as we're nearing the end of August, that means for most people we're also starting the semester, and whether you be a freshman just coming into college, or maybe someone who's a few years into college, I think I have some good start of semester tips that I've learned in my years as a chemistry major, and I know a lot of you more experienced chemistry majors might know a lot of these things, but it's always great to have a refresher because I know even if I've logically known these things in the past, there's still some times where I've forgotten them or gotten lazy and may have fallen into some bad habits. So these are kind of my top start of semester tips to get you off to a good start in your semester because a good start in the semester really lays the foundation and it's so much easier to coast by in your classes if you have a really strong start to your semester. So with that, let's hop right into it. The first thing is the basics. Don't get behind in your classes. And I know this applies to all college classes, but I think it's especially, especially important with chemistry classes because there is a lot of stuff in chemistry that's completely cumulative. You can't know something that you've learned in maybe the fourth unit of the class without knowing something you learned in the second unit of the class. Everything builds onto itself, and so you can't get behind because to get behind means that once you're trying to catch up on stuff, you have to learn everything else that you missed. And with the sheer amount of work in a lot of chemistry classes, it is a nightmare, especially if you have a full course load to go through and relearn all that stuff while the class is getting ahead of you. So do whatever you can to not get behind in class. I've made this mistake before and it's made classes exponentially harder. So always try and stay on top of things, always have your assignments turned in and always like learn the stuff as it comes up because even if you don't have assignments to you need to know the stuff as it comes up so it doesn't start piling up now the second thing is run through practice problems and everyone knows logically to run through practice problems and a lot of professors will assign you homework problems that you have to turn in but this is kind of outside of that even if you've done all your homework assigned problems i want you guys to run through practice problems that aren't needed for a grade a lot of professors will have practice problems on the syllabus that you don't have to turn in and they're just there for practice. So I really, really recommend going through every single practice problem you can whenever you have free time studying or you're caught up. These practice problems, not only do they give you extra looks at what you went over in class, but you get to see new problems and new little tricks that they put in problems. And the wider the breadth of stuff you're familiar with means once you get onto your first exam or quizzes and all, you'll have seen all the stuff before and you won't be caught off guard and you won't have to do some new crazy thinking and logic to solve a problem in the middle of the exam because you'll have seen it before. So as many practice problems as you can do, I promise you if you've done nearly all the practice problems that you've been given by a professor, nothing they've put on an exam is really going to surprise you. So really try and do practice problems. And even if your professor doesn't have practice problems that they've necessarily listed on the syllabus, you can always go ask them for more practice problems, which I'm sure they'd love to give you as much practice problems as you can do. Or even your textbooks in the class, every single chemistry textbook is going to have a section with practice problems. And if you're lucky, a lot of those will also have solutions in the back of the book so you can check your work. So do as many practice problems as you can. If you take away anything, it's that the practice problems are really what's going to get you a good grade in the class. Because what usually happens is you get your example problems that are on the board and your homework problems and all, but those really are the basics. That's like learning the alphabet while well, doing the practice problems is actually learning how to read. So as many practice problems as you can. Now, I'm sure you've heard this next one a thousand times before, but everyone needs a reminder, even I do sometimes, and that is go to office hours. And now, I know everyone says this. Everyone says this at orientation. Everyone says this throughout your entire college career is going to office hours, but I don't think people go to office hours properly because a lot of times what happens is you have easy content or stuff you don't need help with at the start of the class, and then maybe you get a hard problem on a homework set or an exam's coming up and then everyone floods office hours and you try and go into office hours right before an exam and it's 
totally packed and the professor can't really give you the time you need and you're just not going to get as much value out of it. And another thing I notice is if you don't go to office hours at the start of the semester and get familiar with it, if you have a small question like a month or two into the semester, you're going to be a lot less likely to want to go to the professor for help because you're not familiar with office hours and, you know, it's kind of just a mental thing. But if you go to office hours early, what I find, even for simple things, is you get to know your professor better and your professor sees that you're working hard in their class. And this can be really important. There's so many times where maybe you're half a percentage off from getting the next letter grade up and if a professor has seen you working as hard as you can in the class and really putting in the effort, they might just round that grade up for you and that's a huge thing. So going to office hours also gets your professor to know you and kind of knowing how you learn and all so they can help you with problems and in different ways. And what also is a huge part of office hours, if you're working hard in a class, doing well, going to office hours, getting to know your professors, that's going to make for an excellent professor to get a teacher recommendation from. And these professor recommendations are great when it comes to getting into jobs, labs, internships, anything. You really want professors that you can get a recommendation from. So I really recommend going to office hours, building your relationships with these professors. Not only is it going to make you more focused on the class, you're going to get more quality time with the professor, more practice problems, everything, but you're going to get things even outside of class in the form of recommendations and maybe even get to know a professor that you might do research under later on in your college career. Next one is a quick one and it's sort of aimed more at the freshmen and sophomores, but you're going to have a lot of prerequisite classes for your chemistry major. You're going to have your physics, calculus classes, and all of that are not part of the chemistry major. And I'm kind of just warning you, don't slack off in those classes. Those, just because they're random outside of major prerequisite classes, you still want to learn all the content you can in them, and you want to actually focus on these classes because they do become really important later on in your chemistry major. Being good at your calculus and physics and all it's going to be really, really helpful and make your workload a lot less harder when you get into some of these upperclassmen, math, physics heavy chemistry classes like PCHEM Quantum Mech and PCHEM Thermo. So don't really, even, even if they're not major classes, don't lay off on them and put them to the side. They're still important, I promise you. Now, lastly is something I see people put off or they never do in school and they always end up regretting it, and that is getting into research. I want you guys to go onto your school's website where your department is and find all the professors that are doing research labs and all, and I want you to go through, find which ones interest you, and start trying to get into research. And a lot of people don't really tell you how, and it's simple as finding a research lab you're interested in send the professor an email saying, hey, I'm interested in your lab. Do you have any spots that undergrads can maybe help out in your lab? And your professor will email you back. A lot of the times they won't have spots or they're too busy and all, but you'll get quite a few labs that would love to have an undergrad helping out in a professor's research lab. And this is so important. Not only is research kind of what you'll actually be doing in the science field, and that's really important because it lets you know if you'll actually like doing science because even if you've done labs in your general chem or organic chem classes, those labs aren't really representative of actual research. So you're going to be learning what science is actually like, seeing if you like it really soon. And having research is just like having experience. A lot of the times when you graduate, you're going to grad school or applying for a job, they'll want experience. And Coursework, as important as it is, is an actual scientific experience. But if you're working in research and a lab outside of coursework, that's research experience. And research experience in the STEM field is absolutely everything. A job or grad school that sees an applicant and maybe you have a slightly lower GPA than another applicant, but you've been in research for three or four years or even two years, they're going to take the applicant that has research experiment experience nine times out of ten. Research is that important. And not only that, if you publish a paper in undergrad doing this research, that's a free pass to so many, so many opportunities once you graduate. So as soon as you can, find the professors that have interesting research. Get into research. It's simple as emailing them and asking, hey, 
any spots in your lab. So I beg you, get into research. It's so important in STEM fields. I hope these start of the semester tips were helpful for you. I know I always need reminders about these and they've always been helpful for me. So uh, I hope you guys like the video and I'll see you guys next time.